Greetings and salutations, Dave Duford, where I dispense the red pills in the insurance business. Thanks for watching. So that's what we're going to do today and talk about mortgage protection insurance and why you should absolutely stay away from that business model as of May 2020 and beyond. So today is May 2nd, 2020, and a couple of these articles are just a few days old. This one specifically, April 29th, and it shows that pending home sales tank nearly 21% in March. Uh, as uh, realtors still claim prices will hold up. We'll see. Also, Market Watch is saying that pending home sales dropped to lowest level since 2011. That's nine years ago, guys. Right smack dab in the Great Recession as coronavirus takes its toll. And this from the National Mortgage News website. Uh, a commentator here says that based on what we're seeing at the moment, don't be surprised if the sales activity could be down as much as 30% or even 40% just in the next couple of months, and uh, not mentioned here in the article, but during, I would argue, the biggest time to sell homes, which is right in the middle of summer. Now, why am I taking time to show you these uh, recent news stories talking about the home sales business and mortgage protection insurance? Well, so here's the deal with mortgage protection insurance. And again, this is directed to those of you out there who are being recruited into the insurance business. Maybe you have lost your job. Maybe you're considering getting another job or a side hustle or something like that. And you've heard about this thing like mortgage protection insurance, kind of doing your due diligence. The key basis for mortgage protection insurance is new home sales as it relates to generating leads. For example, I bought my home in November of last year. And within a couple of weeks, I had four mortgage protection leads sent to my address. So what happens is, is once your home is closed, that's reported to the county. And then that data is made available to people who buy it, like us insurance agents, to market them for life insurance. It's a great product to sell, it really is. But the problem exists because uh, if there's a couple of reasons why that it's difficult to sell mortgage protection insurance and I would argue uh, severely uh, damaged uh, economies. So number one is that uh, mortgage protection insurance largely is based on people who are buying things with a wage that they must earn. In other words, people buy uh, products, uh, services, insurance, because they have a long-term perspective of feeling certain about where things are going. As soon as that changes, you don't even need it to be bad times. You just need to have a level of uncertainty in the air. People second guess why they would purchase certain products. As much as I love life insurance, I believe it is a discretionary purchase in the minds of many consumers who are younger. Somebody who's 30, somebody who's 40, who may be worried about what's coming down the line economically might say, well, you know, I'll put this life insurance thing off until uh, things calm down and I feel good because after all, I'm young, right? Young people don't die. And the other problem, of course, it's obvious as explained in the article, is that total sales decrease during a down economy. People aren't as willing to spend money on buying or upgrading their home because they have a level of uncertainty. And what happens then is that a bunch of mortgage protection agents go after a smaller and smaller pool of or piece of the pie and are in a more competitive environment with a consumer that is more risk averse from spending excess money that they don't necessarily feel like they may have to. So what is this all to say? It's all to say that I think mortgage protection is going to be on the ropes for the foreseeable future. I don't know what's going to happen. I certainly couldn't tell you with accuracy uh, or with perfect knowledge. Uh, I have the feeling based off of my early days in the insurance business that mortgage protection insurance is going to go dormant like it used to be back in the late aughts and early 2000 teens. So I started in 2011. Uh, I started researching the insurance business, specifically life insurance. And uh, all I really found out, there were just a few multi-level marketing, you know, the typical bunch that you all see, but nothing hard and heavy like it has been really over the last couple of years, simply because the whole business model just completely changed within a year or two back in 2009, 2010. And it wasn't until 2015 to 2016 that you saw a lot of these uh, multi-level focused or multi-level marketing focused agencies uh, pop up, split from the motherships of the uh, insurance MLMs of the world and kind of create their own approach. And uh, I'm worried that agents coming into this business 
are going to think that the business is still going to be there in the same propensity it has been. I just am not convinced about what I see. Because here's what's happened. Even if you come into this business, you're an excellent salesperson. You can sell a lot of insurance. The problem is, is that, sure, you may have somebody buy it today. But whenever you make a sale on any life insurance product, this isn't just mortgage protection. This is final expense, too, and anything else. If you're advanced commission, it's an otherwise known as a loan. That means you're on the hook for this thing for nine months until that loan balance is leveled out and cleared that you don't owe it back if the client lapses or something happens and they just cancel their coverage. So what happens if you sell a policy to somebody today and economically real bad news starts coming out six to nine months later? There is a higher risk for a lot of people who are working classes as it stands with most mortgage protection, that's who you're selling, may consider to just drop their plan and play it safe instead. So the problem is a lot of these MLMs, the big mass recruiters that y'all probably have heard of, very few of them have diversified out of the mortgage protection market. They are absolutely solely focused in it. And I haven't really seen a big move made to some more, I would consider, uh, recession resistant, some say recession proof markets like final expense to provide a lead and sales system to their agents to, I believe, would uh, reduce the risk of uh, lapses, reduce the risk of uh, the problems that come with selling a product that's a discretionary in nature to a group of people that may be uncertain about their financial future. So again, what are the other options you can do besides mortgage protection? I'm bottom line all about final expense. I think final expense is a great life insurance product to be in. The uh, premiums that are paid by our clients are backed by the full faith of the government. What I mean by that is their social security comes in and no politician stupid enough to try to uh, eliminate Social Security or vastly reduce it. There would be 20 million seniors riding on Washington, D.C., Republican or Democrat. They, they vote the bums out, as they will. So I think right now in, in uncertain times, when you sell an insurance po product to a client that does not have to work to actually earn a living because they've already worked to earn their living, meaning they've retired and now draw their pension. There's a level of security that you'll get from a payment or a premium payment prediction that you won't get right now in the midst of an economic downturn. Again, I started in 2011 in final expense and uh, everything was hitting the fan. It was very tough for a lot of people. It certainly was in my personal training uh, business prior to getting into the final expense business. But the final expense business grew exponentially every single year. Well, maybe not exponentially, but 10%, 15%. Even some of the highest priced, uh, more captive carriers like Lincoln Heritage arguably have a product that's higher priced, maybe not as good as quality, even though it's a great company. They do a good job for their clients. Uh, went and grew tremendously. And I think that's a testament to the kind of market that you're in if you target the senior population or the baby boomer population. Uh, that percentage of the population is going to increase uh, by 25 million over the next 20 years, at least, if not more. All these people are retiring with less money than they thought they would. So there's more of a need for final expense. So I say all this because I, I highly encourage you, if you're interested in selling insurance, you really need to give final expense a fair shake, especially right now, now more than ever, with the way the economy is going, uh, because a recession resistant business model is really important. And this is something you'll find in final expense that you won't find in a lot of other life insurance lines. If you're interested in learning more about how it works, I do recruit agents nationally. I teach them to become top producing insurance agents. It's real simple to learn more. Just go to the link below. It goes to my website, daviddufour.com. Then click the green button at the top or the green area that says uh, join Dave's agency. And then you'll learn more about how working in my agency works from the standpoint of teaching you how to become a top producer, not a top uh, multi-level marketing uh, Kool-Aid drinking cooler uh, recruiter. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for listening. Take care.